of the program in its entirety, 7 p.m. until 8 p.m., on the Glory Bound Train, as right here on WHLJ. Okay, let's go now to the Upper Room Ministries Incorporated. 702 Austin Davis Parkway, Waycross, Georgia, for this morning's radio broadcast with your host, Evangelist Dr. Renee Summers. I'm Warren Lee. WHLJ 97.5 FM, 1400 AM and 103.3 Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. Victorious Living Bible Institute Incorporated, an affiliate of Christian Bible Institute and Seminary, a non-denominational Bible Institute founded as part of the Christian Education Department of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries Incorporated, based in Waycross, Georgia. BLBI has expanded now with an on-site campus in Kenya. Our mission is to equip men and women of God to be productive and functioning parts of the local body of Christ. VLBI provides affordable biblical education and leadership training for ministers, professionals, and laypersons. We will provide you with the skills, education, and character needed to effectively serve, equip, and shape the lives of others as they pursue excellence in Christian education, ministry, and leadership. Study on site at our Waycross campus or online in our learning center. Visit www.victoriouslbi.org. Call 1-833-884-8880. Command your morning with Evangelist Renee Sellers on the prayer line, Monday through Friday, beginning at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday with devotion, prayer, and pronouncement of daily affirmations. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to say. Dial 1-712-770-4010 using access code 266590. That's 1-712-770-4010 using access code 266590. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to see on the prayer line with Evangelist Renee Sellers. Good morning, everybody. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, and we are live at 5 on this winning Wednesday morning. Uh, This is another day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're coming to you live on WHLJ 97.5 FM, 103.3 FM, 1400 AM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. Uh, We're also online this morning at Foxy. F-O-X-Y-9-7.com, and you can join us on the conference call at 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. There will be a recap tonight at 7 p.m. on WHLJ. We're continuing our series today on five, on the fivefold ministry, uh, which is found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And so we're talking about the role and responsibility of the pastor this week. Uh, And I think that uh, yesterday we shared some of the reasons that pastors walk away from ministry, and we gave a a word of encouragement as we shared those ten areas. But today I want to talk about the value of a team, because together everyone achieves more. We shared this on Monday night in our Bible college course, because we're taking this class uh, on the pastoral ministry. It's a leadership class. And so for those students that are not even pastors that are in our class, they're understanding just how valuable and how important and how serious the role of the pastor is. I encourage you to enroll in Victorious Living Bible Institute and get enrolled in these leadership classes because they are phenomenal. And so I'm going to talk about the value of the team. I'm going to talk about the value of the team today. This is Winning Wednesday. And if pastors and leaders are going to fulfill their calling effectively, and are going to endure even with the weight of ministry, they are going to have to put together a winning team. They're going to have to prayerfully appoint individuals to delegate and assist them in the area of ministry. 
pastoral ministry. So before we begin to share on that, I'm going to ask uh, Evangelist Paulette Griffin to open our broadcast with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you glory, praise, and honor. We thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to be able to come before thy throne room of grace. Thank you for the sweet kiss of thy precious Holy Spirit that has awakened us in our right minds with the use of all of our facilities, that we can come together from the north, the south, the east, and the west, together in your name to learn more of you, Lord God. Bless us, Lord God, as you open up our spiritual gates right now. Heavenly Father, open up our ear gates right now, Lord God, to receive thy word this day, that it may become be planted upon good ground and come up in the fruition as you've called it to be. Lord God, we've come to glorify and magnify thy name, for truly you are worthy of glory, praise, and honor. There is none like thee, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we ask that you minister into our hearts, our minds, and our spirit, and bless our going and our coming right now, Lord God. Heavenly Father, and give us traveling mercies upon the highways and the byways, Lord God as you take us back to our de- back and forth to our destination, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we ask right now, Lord God, that you make a way out of the way for those, Lord God, that are looking for employment, Lord God, that you will make a way and open up doors right now, Lord God, to provide for their families. We thank you and we give you glory for all that you've done. We thank you for moving as Jehovah Raphael, the Lord God, our healer. Thank you for being Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. Thank you for being everything we need, desire, and want. We thank you and we praise you in the matchless name of Jesus for all things. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. Thank you so much, woman of God. I am going to uh, be talking about the value of a team, but before I do that, and I pray we may not finish today, but I pray we do. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, Any time... When I was a basketball player, and some of you may not believe it if you see me because I'm only five feet. I might have been 5'2 in high school. I've shrunk a couple of inches uh, over the years. But I played basketball. I was a point guard. Uh, but before we w- were, uh, got, were able to play, we had to uh, prepare and practice and get selected to be on the team. And so the way that they chose us to be on the team is, uh, by our skills and our abilities, by how well we dribbled the ball, by how well we handled the ball, uh, by how well we worked in, with other members of the team, were we team players. And so many times when you're, when you're looking for people to delegate, you have to look, delegate people who are capable, who are God-fearing, who are trustworthy, and also who are loyal. You have to delegate people who are capable, who are God-fearing, who know their job, who are God-fearing, who are trustworthy, and those who will not covet or try to take over or try to come in and usurp uh, your authority. And so we talked about this the other night. The pastor has a great responsibility. Uh, They have an obligation to mature the saints and to stir up and encourage They're responsible for comforting the people and praying for everyone. They're also responsible for admonishing and exhorting and counseling and teaching. Pastors have the obligation, and they must spend time in uh, the study of the Word of God. They have to have a personal prayer life if they're going to hear from God on behalf of the people. they got a family. Many of them have families, and they uh, have to spend time with family. They have to have their home in order because... If home is not in order, it's very uh, difficult to uh, help other people get their lives in order. they got to be good neighbors. We talked about the uh, parable in Luke about the Samaritan who was a trustworthy neighbor, good neighbor, a true neighbor to the man that was on the side of the road. And that pastor must have a balanced life. That pastor is also, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're required and uh, did people desire them to attend baby showers and uh, bridal showers and they have to go to the hospital and visit the sick. They help people move and they help people with different emergency situations. They visit the widows and fatherless and the elderly, going to the nursing homes, going to the jails. They're ministering all the time. 
Many times pastors get calls at night and they have to get up and, and go out at night. We've had moments where we've gotten up in the middle of the night and went all the way to Jacksonville with families and Savannah with families. And there's nothing we do grudgingly. And, and, and pastors, if we get up in the middle of the night and we, we have a, a negative attitude about going and seeing about a family that has an emergency, then we may want to check our spirit because that's what we should be doing. We, we are obligated to get up in the middle of the night when families are going through emergencies. And so we are available and must be available for counseling because those of the, in our ministries, they need help when it comes to seeking a job, applying for jobs. They need help managing finances. We do premarital counseling, uh, uh, marital counseling, family counseling. We, uh, uh, we uh, uh, confront issues and we do uh, meetings and maximize ministry trainings. We do all those things to try to do our job to edify the body of Christ. We have children's ministries. A, a, a single a marriage ministries. We have the women's ministry and so much that goes on as part of the pastoral obligation. And so the, the pastor has to oversee the ushers, oversees the small groups, oversees the greeters, oversees the education. There's so much, but how can one person oversee so much? How can one person truly demonstrate excellence with all the areas of ministry that are, in, that are in need of assistance or oversight. How can one person do this and the ministry consistently grow? It, it's, it's almost, you know, uh, uh, they can do it, but they'll be like those pastors that are quitting all the time. They'll get burned out. They can't. They can try to do it, but they'll be like leaders who get frustrated. And when you get frustrated with ministry, you get frustrated with the people that you've been called to love. And so the team helps you uh, delegate much of that responsibility. Somebody say together, everyone achieves more. And so one question we asked the other night is, how large does does a church have to get before these responsibilities are too much? For one person, how large does a ministry have to be before these obligations are too much for one person? Well, there are three areas I want to look at this morning and three uh, aspects of ministry that I want to talk about because uh, I want to talk about Moses. I want to talk about Jesus. And I want to talk about the early church. Moses, Jesus, and the early church recognized that there was a need for the team. There was a need for the team in Moses' ministry because he had three million people to lead, (laughs) three million people in his congregation. So he had a great level of responsibility. And so if the pastor is going to succeed in ministry, he or she will have to make the building up of people, building the team, a priority. If we're going to advance the cause of Jesus Christ, if our local churches are going to grow, then we must be intentional about building people. We've got to be intentional about building the team. We've got to be intentional about trainings. We have to be intentional about making sure that the, that the people in our ministries are not just members. They are ministers. We have to go beyond saying, you're a, I'm a member of this church. Yes, you're a member of, of the church, but as a member of the local church, what are we doing to minister to other people? What are we doing to take the gospel to the community? What are we doing to take the gospel to uh, to those on our job? What are we, we may never go to Africa, but there's somebody in your job site that needs to know Jesus. You may never go to Korea, but there's somebody in Walmart that needs to know Jesus. We as members of the body of Christ are, and members of the local church are ministers of the gospel. Are we using what God gave us? And so thereby, ladies and gentlemen, the team is necessary for the full functioning of the local church. And so in Exodus chapter 18, Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, recognized that if Moses was going to be sustained in this ministry that he, he had been called to, then he needed to add some structure. I said yesterday, and I may have said it another time, that you can have a great vision for your ministry. You can have a great mission for your ministry. You know your vision. You know your mission. But without structure, you're only going to be able to go so far. 
Moses had a great vision. He, he knew where he was taking the people. He had a mission. He knew what his mission was, is to, is to get the people out of Egypt and get them to the promised land. But Moses, if he was going to keep from getting burnt out, he had to have structure within that ministry. I'm going to be reading from Exodus chapter 18, verses 17 through uh, 26 of the New King James Version of the Bible this morning. Moses had to put together the team if he was not going to keep from getting burnt out. Uh, it says in verse 17, So Moses' father-in-law said to him, The thing that you do is not good, but you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. <laughs> for this thing is too much for you. You're not able to perform it by yourself. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people so that you may bring the difficulties to God, and you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens, and let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. So it will be easier for you, for they will bear the burden with you. I need somebody to underline that. They will bear the burden with you. If you do this thing, and God so commands you, <laughs> then you will be able to endure. And all these people will also go to their place in peace. So Moses heeded the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. So they judged the people at all times, the hard cases they brought to Moses, but they judged every small case themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way to his own land. This tells us that not every little issue needs to be brought to the pastor. If we delegate people, and, and, and this is the qualifications of those people that we are to delegate, delegate and set over other people in the local church, you have to be careful that, number one, you have to be prayerful about who is delegated, and number two, you have to make sure that these qualifications that Jethro set for Moses are also set for you. The qualifications that Jethro set for Moses. And first of all, we've got to understand something. Jethro said in verse 19, he says, listen to my voice. He says, I give you counsel. And so one of the things that we have to do is we have to have the humility to listen to the voice of wise counsel. I believe a lot of us will stay out of trouble if we listen to the voice of our leaders. Every leader is in authority, but they're also under authority. In other words, every leader should have a leader. Every leader is, should be subject to somebody else, somebody's voice, somebody else's counsel. And so Jethro said, listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. I'm talking to you, but if you listen to me, God will be with you. And I'm going to share something that Jethro said. And he said, stand before God so that you may bring the difficulties to God. Stand before God so that you can take the needs of the people to God. And that's what we must do as leaders. And we lead in people. We are, are, are shepherding people. Do We watch out for their souls. Their blood is on our hands. We are concerned and compassionate and caring for other people. And so thereby the needs of the people must be taken to God. How do you do that? In prayer. We've got to get on our face. And get before the Lord in prayer if we're going to lead the people effectively. Get before the Lord in prayer and take their needs to him. Take their needs to him. 
We, we can take the needs of the people to the elders' board, but without prayer, what are we accomplishing? We can take the needs of the people to the, to the monthly meeting, but without prayer, what are we accomplishing? The first person we should be taking the needs to is to God. I told them yesterday that, listen, if you can't talk to anybody else, nobody else is there for you to talk to, learn to unload on God. Learn to give those cares to God. Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares about you. This is Winning Wednesday, and you have to have a winning mentality knowing that God cares about you. And when you care about people, you'll take their concerns to him. And says, Jethro says, and you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way, verse 20, in which they must walk and the work that they must do. So what he was telling Moses, now you got to take up the mantle of a teacher. And you got to teach the whole congregation the principles that you're using in counseling. You've got to teach them how to help others. Teach them the way in which they should walk and the work they should do. Moses, now your responsibility is to teach them how to help others. In other words, Moses, you have to disciple them. And so pastors, like, like Jethro is telling Moses, take the cares of the people to God, number one, and then disciple the people. Teach them how to teach others. Teach them to be disciples. We're getting ready to implement each one, reach one, teach one in upper room. And so what that means is that the people that we are, are, are reaching, each person, is, is each mature believer is responsible for discipling. And so, but but the the key is we have to each teach. We as leaders must be teaching, must be discipling, and then others must be discipling others. We all have a responsibility to be disciples, making disciples, making disciples of all men. The Bible, it doesn't talk about making members. It says making disciples. Those who are can do effect work uh, do the work of the kingdom uh, effectively and work alongside the leader. And so, teach them, disciple them the statutes and laws, and show them the ways. Disciple them, be a good example to them in which they should walk and and the work. Teach them the work that they should do. Pastors are, are, are also teachers, and the Bible says we should be apt to teach. We should be able, apt to teach. And so moreover, verse 21, you shall select. This is the qualifications of the people you should select. You don't delegate uh, uh, new, new believers to be over other believers. Can't do it. It won't work. You can't delegate someone who has not shown faithfulness to the leadership or to the local church. It won't work. You cannot delegate someone who has not been loyal to the ministry and the leader. I'm telling you, it will not work. You try to delegate someone who is not loyal and faithful to the church, it will become a disaster. It will tear your church up if you delegate and put people over others and they're not mature enough to do the job. I know sometimes we've been there too, and 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 you know you 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 put people over because you need to you need somebody to handle that responsibility. But but if we follow God's design for delegation, it will work. If we work the word, and 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 and, and uh, this word is for for upper room as well. If we work the word, the word will work. If we follow God's design, it will work. This is what Jethro said to Moses. We're talking about delegating and team. He says, moreover, you shall select from all the people. He says, I'm reading for the King James, able men. So that means that they're not only capable of doing it. But they're qualified to do it. They, they, they. Uh, what is the word that I used the other day? They have uh, proven themselves. That they have proven themselves, and so able men, capable men, men who know what and how to do this. And then he says, such as fear God. These people must be capable, and they must be God fearing. 
Because when you put God-fearing people over other people, they won't do anything wrong. Because their first thing that will come to their mind is, what would God think about what I'm doing? What would God think about what I'm saying? What would God even think about what I'm thinking? A God-fearing person is always concerned about what God thinks. A God-fearing person is always under, always understands that when nobody else is watching, God is. And so thereby this person must be capable and they must be a person who fears the Lord. The next uh, qualification that Jethro gave Moses is they must be men of truth. What does that mean by men of truth? simply means they've got to be trustworthy. <laughs> they have got to be trustworthy. You you don't want anybody who you can't trust. You know you, you you know one of the things that I was studying on yesterday as I was preparing for a meeting on last night is you and I must trust God. And so when we go before God and He gives us the and speaks to us, and Holy Spirit speaks to us and says, appoint this person or appoint that person, then we got to trust his judgment. And this is why we must be, be doing this prayerfully and trust God's judgment and God's plan for us. Even, we, even when we don't see it, God has a plan and a purpose. And, 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 and for God, he knows the plans that he has for us. As Jeremiah says, plans to prosper us and give us a future and a hope. And so when we seek God for these able men, these God-fearing men and these trustworthy men, we can't go wrong. Even if uh, it's like it was with Judas. There was a purpose for Judas being among the twelve. There was a purpose and a plan for Judas being among the twelve. Judas was trained just like the other disciples. He was equipped just like the other disciples. He went out, cast out devils, and and did the same works that the others did. But yet there was a purpose for him being chosen as among, among the twelve. And so there's a purpose for everybody that God assigns to your team. And so, ladies and gentlemen, trust God when you're selecting these able men. And covetous, covetous, one who hates covetousness. In other words, somebody who's not greedy, somebody who uh, uh, is not greedy for uh, a position or possessions. And so somebody who is, is, I would say, loyal as well. And so these four aspects, capable, God-fearing, trustworthy, lacking, hating covetousness, these are not greedy. These are the qualifications of the people that we are to delegate according to Jethro and what he was saying to Moses. Three million people Moses was leading, and he could not do it by himself. Whether you have 30 or 300 or 3,000 or 3 million, learn to delegate wherever you are. We all must learn to delegate if we're going to be sustained in ministry. Jethro said to Moses, you shall select these men, and what you're going to do is you're going to appoint them. Some of you are going to, you're going to put over thousands. You're going to appoint some over hundreds. You're going to appoint some over 50 and tens. You're going to delegate and appoint them over a specific group. You're going to give them a group of people. You're going to assign them to that group, and they're going to be responsible for that group. And so just like Jethro said to Moses, I'm saying today, you're going, you must select these different people with these qualifications, capable, God-fearing, trustworthy, not greedy, with these qualifications, and put them over specific groups in your church. And, and they're going to be responsible for that group of people. What's going to happen is the small matters, that delegate should be able to handle the great matters. Somebody died, somebody's sick, a major uh, uh, a discord, uh, tr- somebody sowing discord or division, uh, a major issue that comes up, yes, those need to go to your pastor. This is what Moses said to Jethro, and let do- put them over the group. Let them judge the people at all times. You've got to spend your time in the Word. Your time must be spent preparing to break the bread of life. 
Your time must be spent preparing to feed the people on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. Your time must be spent in prayer, getting before the Lord and, and praying and seeking him for what to say to them on Sunday morning. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you, if we're going to consistently give fresh bread, then we must be intentional about delegation. And so let them judge the people at all times. What's going to happen when you do that, Moses? What's going to happen when you do that, Pastor? Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. Let me take a quick break for Station ID. We're live at 5. We're in Exodus chapter 18, talking about the need for delegation, using Moses' story and conversation with Jethro as our example. Command your morning on WHLJ 97.5 FM. 103.3 103.3 FM, 1400 AM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y 97.com. And you can join us on the call at 712-770-4010, access code 266590. There will be a recap tonight at 7 p.m. on WHLJ. I'm going to be a DJ one day. But anyway, it says in Exodus 18, Verse 22, let them judge the people at all times, those people that you delegate, those people that you appoint. Let them judge the people at all times, the great matters, the difficult situations. They'll bring them to you. Let them handle the small stuff. I remember uh, an issue came up when we visited a ministry, and I called to discuss what occurred. I never spoke to the pastor. I spoke to one of the elders. The elder handled the entire situation. The elder handled it. The pastor was was informed about it, but the elder took care of it. Why? Because he was delegated to that specific area. We went to a ministry and went on a tour of the church. One of the elders took us on a tour and so because the pastor was spending his time refreshing, getting ready to break the bread. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going, and this is what Jethro said to Moses. If you do this thing and God so commands you, that's what I want to get to. This was not just a, a something that Moses was uh, uh, was going to have to think about doing. This is what he was being commanded to do. Jethro said, if you do this thing and God so commands you, I'm talking, but God is talking too. He says, then you will be able to endure. And so, ladies and gentlemen, pastors and leaders, if you do what Jethro told Moses to do, what God commanded him to do, then you will be able to endure. You won't get frustrated. If there will be moments that, you, you know, that, 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 that things will come up, but you, listen, you, you won't get frustrated, so easily frustrated with ministry, and you won't get frustrated with those that you've been called to lead and love. Somebody else can handle that small stuff. And let them bring the big issues to you. But you've got to know the kind of people that you are to appoint Capable, God-fearing, trustworthy, and those who are not greedy. Let me say that again. The qualifications based on Exodus chapter 18 of the people that you are to delegate. Capable, those that can handle it. (laughs) Those that fear the Lord. Because you got people that love the Lord, but that does not mean they're ready to try to deal with other people. Capable. God-fearing, trustworthy, and they're not greedy. They're not greedy for position. They're not greedy for possession. But they love the Lord and they love their leader to do right by them. This is why Scripture says love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. I want to share something real quick. As I was studying last night or studying yesterday, preparing for a special meeting that I had on last night. When human hearts contend against God, they will inevitably contend against one another. And so this is one issue with people, is we got to be careful because people are not contending. They may be contending with you. They may be coming against you. But watch this. When they come against you, they first contended with him. 
And so since our flesh is naturally inclined to exalt itself and serve its own interests, our flesh is constantly at war with God and his kingdom as well as at war with others. But when we love God, we have a sincere, unconditional love for his people. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is why it's important that those people are God-fearing, because if they love God, they're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to honor their leader, and they're going to be careful how they handle the people that you put them in charge of. What happens when we delegate? As Jethro said to Moses, you will be able to endure. And verse 23 says, and all this people will also go to their place in peace. So Moses, he listened to his father-in-law. He did what he said, and he chose those able men. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's just part one of what we're going to talk about is that the value of the team is it starts with knowing who to delegate. No, wait a minute. It starts with, with the knowing and understanding the necessity of delegation and then knowing who to delegate. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for, the value of a team. We talked about Jethro and Moses in Exodus 18. Go to it today. Read it and study it for yourself. Uh, we're going to transition into prayer. Join us again tomorrow morning as we continue talking about the value of the team, as we talk about the fivefold ministry gift of the pastor. I am going to ask Evangelist Darlene Gant to take us in with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for this opportunity uh, to be able to be on the prayer line together today, Father. We thank you for the woman of God bringing such an awesome devotional forth, Father. And we pray today, Father, that you will direct us, Father, in all that we do, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray that the word that we've heard, Father, will be implanted in our hearts, Lord, that we will remember it, Father, feast on it, and, and Father, let it absorb into our spirit today, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray today, Father, for your direction, Father, for you to give us wisdom, Father, wisdom to make sound decisions, wisdom, Father. Oh, Father, to be careful what we say and what we do and where we go, Father, what we hear, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray today, Father, for forgiveness for anything that we said or done that displeased you, Lord. We're thankful, Father, for this new day, Father, new day with new mercies, Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you today, Father, to strengthen us in our thinking, Lord. Strengthen us, Father, that we, Father, will study your word, Father, that we will stay in your word, Lord, that your word, Father, will be implanted in our hearts, Father. Oh, Father, as we study your word, Father, we know that your word will help us, Father. Oh, Father, our mind, Father. Oh, Father, we pray that our mind is stayed on you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for the mind of Christ today, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you today, Father. Heavenly Father, look down upon our families, Lord. Heavenly Father, let us be leaders in our families, Father, to show our loved ones, Father. Oh, Father, that there is a way, hallelujah. Oh, Father, a way, Father, that we must live, Father. Let us be good examples, Father, that they will see and know, Father, that we are the light of the world, Father. We pray today, Father, that we will tell our the loved ones, Father, if we've offended anyone, Father, that we will let them know that we are truly sorry, Lord. And, Father, we pray to be strengthened in our area of forgiveness, Father. Hold nothing against anyone, Father. Oh, Father, but remember, Father, that forgiveness is important, Father, for you forgive us. You said if we cannot forgive those, you cannot forgive us, Lord. Heavenly Father, so we thank you today, Father. Heavenly Father, we pray today, Father. Heavenly Father, that everyone on the prayer line today, Lord, everyone, each and every one, Father, would be blessed today. Blessed, Father. But blessed, Father, when they leave the line today, Lord. Oh, Father, on their jobs, blessed. In their homes, blessed, Father. Everywhere they go, blessed, Father. We pray today, Father, for, 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 for direction, Father, or who we should even talk to, Father. Oh, Father, when we witness, Father, lead us even to those that you would like us to witness to, Lord. Father, we ask you to guide us in all that we do today, Father. Heavenly Father, we realize, Father, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, that all that we do, Father, Father, we should be doing it to your glory, Lord. Doing it to your glory, Father, for you deserve all the best that we can give, Father. Heavenly Father, so we pray, Father. Oh, Father, we pray, Father. We ask you, Father, hallelujah. Oh, Father, to help us, Father. Help us, Lord. Father, we yield to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, for we are not our own, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, for we know, Father, we need you, Father, in every aspect of our life, Father. Father, look down upon families today, Father. Families that are going through, Father. Families that 
Father, are having all kinds of financial problems, Father. Whatever the situation is, Father. Oh, Father, we pray, Father. We pray for strength for the families, Father. We pray today, Father, that you will supply their needs, Father, for we know that you're a provider, you're a protector. Everything that we need, Father, we know you have it, Lord. So we ask you today, Father, to help those that are struggling in their finances, help those that are struggling in their communication, Lord. Heavenly Father, help them, Lord, Father, to see, oh, Father, that you have a better way for them, Lord. Heavenly Father, so we're asking you, Father, to bless families. We're asking you, Father, to restore marriages. We're asking you, Lord, Father, to give parents, Father, direction on raising their children, that they raise them with the fear and admonition of you, God. Oh, Father, we pray, Father, they will teach the children, oh, Father, what is right, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray that the children will walk in obedience to them that have authority over them, my God. Heavenly Father, we ask you today to look down upon, Father, our young men and our young ladies, Father. Oh, Father, they're in the streets all hours of the night, Father. Heavenly Father, we're praying, Father, that you will draw them, Father. We're asking you, Lord, to draw them, Father. Oh, Father, let not another young man, hallelujah, oh, Father, lose his life to violence, Father. We're praying, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Father, that somebody will show them that there's a better way. Oh, my God, we thank you this morning, Lord. Oh, Father, we pray for young ladies. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you, your Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Father, let them know. Somebody show them and tell them, hallelujah, that they're worth something, Father, that their value is great, hallelujah. Oh, Father, they're precious, Lord. Oh, Father, we cry out for the young people today, Lord. Oh, Father, we cry out that we be examples before them, Lord. Oh, Father. Father, we cry out, Father, that they find hallelujah. Oh, Father, that they don't have to live in all kinds of confusion, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those that abuse her. Oh, Father, we pray for the abused ones, Father. We pray, Father. Oh, Father, that you remove them out of the abuse situations, my God. Heavenly Father, we ask you today, Father. Oh, Father, to draw them, Father. We know no man can come unto you, Lord, unless you draw them, Lord. Heavenly Father, so we're asking you, Lord, hallelujah, to draw them, my God. Oh, Father, look down upon all of the young people, Father. Oh, Father, all the young people, Father. We're praying, Father, against violence today, Lord. Oh, Father, we're praying against the immoral situations that we see, Father. Ha. Oh, Father, let us, hallelujah. Oh, Father, stand before them, Father. Stand before them doing what is right, Father. Let us stand before them showing them love, Lord. Oh, Father, they are seeing, no, there is a better way, my God. Oh, Father, we pray, Father. Oh, Father, to stand strong, Father. We pray, Father, hallelujah, not to be accusing, Father, hallelujah, but to be examples before them, Lord, huh? telling them the truth, huh? Oh, Father, we pray no compromising, hallelujah. We don't compromise with the enemy, my God, huh? Oh, Father, if we know that Satan is out to kill, steal, and destroy, my God, huh? Oh, Father, would you come that we might have life in heaven more abundantly, Lord, huh? Oh, Father, we cry out this morning, Lord, huh? Oh, Father, we yield to your spirit, my God. High glory, hallelujah. Oh, Father, we pray, Father. Ha. Oh, Father, that you'll move, ha. Oh, Father, you'll move in these situations, Lord. Ha. Oh, Father, you'll release those captives that have been held against their will, Lord. Ha. Oh, Father, we pray for all of those that are human trafficked, Lord. Ha. Oh, Father, we pray today, Father, for release. Ha. Oh, Father, set them home, Lord, we pray, Lord. Ha. Heavenly Father, we're praying for all of those that are sick in their bodies, Lord. Ha. Heavenly Father, we know, hallelujah, you're able to heal, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we know you're able to deliver, my God, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we're praying, Father, for the miraculous things to take place, my God, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, testimonies to come forth, Lord, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, your healing virtue, ha, huh, my God. Oh, Father, we're asking your Father to heal, hallelujah. Heal, Father, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, those that obtain the report from the doctor, ha, huh? saying there is no hope, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we put all our hope in you, my God, ha. Huh? Heavenly Father, let people come forth, hallelujah, calling in, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, tell them of your goodness and mercy, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, calling in, hallelujah. Oh, Father, we may have obtained the bad report, my God, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, you said live, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, you said live, my God, ha. Huh? Oh, Heavenly Father, we cry out this morning, Lord, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we cry out, hallelujah. Oh, Father, for the healing, ha. Huh? We cry out, Father, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, for the souls that are lost, Lord, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we cry out, Lord, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, that you 
you, Father. Huh? Oh, Father, will call them out, Father. Huh? Oh, Father, that you, Lord. Huh? Oh, Father, will call them, Father. Huh? And we pray, Father, that their hearts huh? be not hardened against you, Lord. Huh? Oh, Father, we ask you today, Father. Huh? Oh, Father, look down upon each and every one that's on the line today, Father. Oh, Father, that don't know you're in the part of their sins, Lord. Huh? Oh, Father, but they call in and they listen, my God. Huh? Oh, Father, we pray, Father, that you draw them, Lord. Huh? Oh, Father, we pray, Father, they take it not lightly. Huh? Oh, Father, we don't know the minute or the hour. Huh? Oh, Father, when we take our last breath, Father. Oh, Father, we ask you, Lord, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, that soul see your kingdom, my God, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, let them hear the woman of God, ha. Huh? Let their hearts be pricked, my God, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, draw them, Lord, we pray, Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you today, Father, look down upon every ministry represented on this line today, Lord. Heavenly Father, look down upon them, Father. Strengthen them, Father. Oh, Father, make a way for them, Father. Bless the leaders, Lord, every pastor. Bless them, Lord. Oh, Father, every pastor, Father, we ask your Father. Oh, Father. Father, look over their families, Father. Keep them protected, Father. Shield it, Lord. Huh? Oh, Father, as they seek to do your will, Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for them, Father. Oh, Father, we pray for their health. Huh? Oh, Father, we pray for their strength, Lord. Huh? Oh, Father, we pray, Father, for all the members of their ministries, Lord. Oh, Father, that they walk in obedience, Lord. Oh, Father, do the work that you called us to do, Lord. Heavenly Father, we lift up your name today, Father. Oh, Father, we give you glory today, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray, Father, for the woman of God, for Dr. Renee Sellers and Pastor Samuel Sellers, oh, Father, for bringing command your morning forth. We are thankful, Father, for them, Lord, teaching us, Father. Oh, Father, we ask you, Lord, to bless them, Father. Bless every ministry that they're involved with, Father. Oh, Father, bless the school, Victoria's Bible school, Father, bless them, Lord, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, keep them, Father, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we pray today, Father. We thank you for Mr. Lee and all of his staff bringing this broadcast forth. We pray, Father, they be blessed, Father. Oh, Father, we pray, Father, for everyone that didn't think it was too much to come on this morning, Father. Oh, Father, we just give you thanks, Father. We give you glory, Father. We honor you, Father, not only with our mouth, Father, but with our hearts, Lord. Oh, Father, we leave this line today, Father. Oh, Father, let us be careful what we say out of our mouths, Father. Let us be careful what we see with our eyes, Lord. Oh, Father, we protect our air gate, Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father. Oh, Father, we know, Father, you are a keeper, Father. You are a keeper our souls, Lord. Oh, Father, so we ask you, Father, to order our steps today, Father, and all that we do, Lord. Oh, Father, we come together again, Father. Oh, Father, giving you praise, honor, and glory, Father, for you are worthy of it all, Father. We love you, Lord. We love you, and we say thank you once again, God. Oh, Father, for another day, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory belongs to you, for you are worthy, my God. All of these blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. And it is so. <clears throat> and if there's someone on the line today that heard the word today from the woman of God and you made up in your mind that you want to be saved, this is a great opportunity. So as I say the salvation prayer, please repeat after me. Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth, that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord, and I make him Lord of my life right now today. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices. I thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of all my sins. Jesus is my Lord. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things have become new in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer after me or with me, we want to say welcome to the body of Christ. We are so excited that you made a decision to join the body of Christ. We love you. We want to encourage you to find a ministry that you can go to where you can learn more about the Lord's word. You can learn and build your relationship with the Lord in prayer, studying his word, and sitting under sound leadership. We once again say welcome. And at this time, we release the line back to Dr. Renee Sellers of Command Your Morning. 
Thank you so much, woman of God of United Warriors of Prayer. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, to God be the glory, everybody. God bless you. We talked about the value of the team using Jethro and Moses' story found in Exodus 18. Go back and study it and read it uh, at your leisure so that you can understand the concept of team ministry. It goes all the way back to the Old Testament. And so we're, we're thankful today to be coming to you live on WHLJ, 97.5 FM, 103.3 FM, 1400 AM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia, also online at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. Uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and it is a domestic Violence Awareness Month. And in October, the second Saturday in October, the ladies of the Upper Room Victorious Women Ministry will be hosting a Taking Care of Me Breast Cancer Awareness Brunch. Taking Care of Me Breast Cancer Awareness Brunch, hosted by one of our mem- uh, one of our leaders, uh, Mrs. Uh, 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 Beverly Davis. Beverly Davis, and facilitated by her sister, Juanita Davis, who uh, has served Waycross and surrounding counties very well uh, at the Mammogram Center. And so she's a phenomenal teacher. She's been with us before, and, and, and I mean, she knows what she's talking about as we talk about self-care, breast care, uh, women's health. And we're going to talk about all those things on that day. Uh, some of survivors of breast cancer will be with us. Come out and share your story on October 12th at 10 a.m., from 10 a.m. to 12. You can register at eventbrite.com or you can register at the com at our events page. But whatever you do, get to Waycross October 12th, 2019. God bless you, everybody. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, for every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith, and who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe that, ladies and gentlemen, you can decree and declare, I win, I am victorious. That's it. Tune in tonight at 7 p.m. Those on the call, please remain on the line. Friends, for the last hour, you have been listening to Command Your Morning Prayer Line, live from Nephro Ministries Incorporated, 702 Aussie Davis Parkway, out of Waycross, Georgia, comes your way Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. until 6 a.m., a recorded portion of the program in its entirety, 7 p.m. until 8 p.m., on the Glory Bound Train. The host of Command Your Morning is Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers. And the Upper Room Ministry, well, it originates from 702 R.C. Davis Parkway out of Waycross, Georgia, where the pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III. Hear it on WHLJ 103.3 FM, 1400 AM, and 97.5 FM. Command Your Morning is a service of the Upper Room Ministries Incorporated, 702 R.C. Davis Parkway, Waycross, Georgia. Oh!